Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and my next guest is Jeff Gray, CEO and co-founder of Glowware. Jeff, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, since this is the first time we're talking, so I would love to hear from you because you're a co-founder of the company. What is it all about? So Glueware is a software company that is focused on network automation and is currently automating the networks of MasterCard, of Merck, of EY, as well as Global 2000 customers like Terracon and Acuity Insurance. Glueware has created a layer of automation that is able to go down and crawl any existing enterprise traditional network and create a layer of automation across both traditional as well as API driven, as well as cloud driven networking and create a digital twin of that network that exists. And when we create that digital twin, it shows security violations, outage causing misconfigurations, performance limiting misconfigurations, and not only shares where those issues are, but also provides the ability to cleanse the network and bring it back to gold standard. Once that gold standard is created, Gluer has the intelligence to be able to keep it in compliance and process any change. And so really what we're doing is setting the foundation for self-operating autonomic automation for the future. It's of course, technology is there, but also social and cultural aspects is there. We talk about DevOps, we talk about DevSecOps, we talk about NetOps. Uh, so as you held these companies, you, do you provide just the tech solution or you also held them in cultural change? Because that plays a very big role because they also need a totally new approach when they look network from the cloud native perspective. Well, we, we provide the framework for these companies to affect change in their organizations. And, and as you rightfully pointed out, it is a matter of automating their traditional networking, but then also bring that same layer of automation across any API driven controller infrastructure, as well as cloud to have one common layer of automation because otherwise they're operating with islands. And it's one thing to automate traditional and have another island in cloud or API driven controller infrastructure. But what these enterprises are looking for to digitally transform and create better IT outcomes is to have one layer of automation where first they can automate what they have, extend to modern architectures, and then in phase two, be able to integrate with their tapestry of automation and third party systems. Now, the fact that we provide the framework, the company, the enterprise still needs to affect that change internally. We provide best practices and, and guidelines, but the enterprises that have gone out and gold their teams to go and implement in a certain time scale ha have, have made a difference. So if, if these companies bonus their teams to go and do this, then the teams have been very successful. The second piece of this is taking away some of the traditional access which may sound a little bit of extreme, but when you start taking away the ability to make changes via CLI, it forces the organization to adopt automation. And so absolutely, it's this cultural change that needs to happen, and that is the critical part. Technology is one piece, but the company does need to change the way it's doing business. So can you also uh, touch a bit on, though you focus on providing a framework, but role and importance, I just want to emphasize the point that we're making that uh, as we talk about DevOps, DevSecOps, NetOps, even SREs, uh, these are not just terms, you know, they have direct impact on how somebody does IT or on business. So can you talk about the importance of embracing NetOps practices as well to make things better for these organizations? DevOps has been successful in our industry, especially at the application layer within the data center, and it's really transformed the way that businesses build and, and operate and deliver software uh, to their users as well as external customers. <clears throat> Network operations has been more of the laggard. Uh, it's, one of, it's the last frontier for folks to be able to make that transition. And there's that middle layer, there's that connecting of the DevOps world to the NetOps world that has been a missing link. There's been a gap there. Now, the way that, that Glueware has brought our products to market has first of all been focused on allowing NetOps to have pre-built applications for automation for source of truth, 
for config drift and audit and compliance, for OS patching, for security reasons, for policy automation to be able to affect change at scale without being scared of breaking the network because of the intelligence. And now we have launched Gluer Lab, which is our IDE, which opens up the ability for DevOps practices to be adopted within enterprises and connecting the worlds of DevOps and NetOps. Now, of course, there are companies that have gone out and it's core business for them because they are software companies, they are automation companies. And so it's more natural for a Google, for a Facebook, for a Goldman Sachs of, of the world to create their own automation, look to connect the DevOps and NetOps world. For the mass market, it is a tall order to go out and, and build this layer. They, they have done so successfully to a certain layer, but bringing the ability to make any change within the network to be able to make sure the network is in compliance, to push the button and 10,000 different uh, configurations change in a safe and predictable manner is a lot. Of, it requires a lot of investment, a lot of care and feeding to build a declarative item potent infrastructure. And so actually connecting the DevOps worlds and NetOps and moving from say buzzwords into reality to affect IT outcomes, that's been the challenge. And, and so when companies are achieving 50 to one time and cost metrics, when they're actually able to leverage our platform to go in and wrap automation around any, anything to create their own applications that exist on top of our framework, to go out and automate any API driven infrastructure, as well as create their own workflows and give them the power. Then we've been able to watch customers move from kind of two islands, if you will, to really connecting these, these worlds. And it's been fantastic to see. So fully, fully integrated CI CD pipelines to be able to change parameters from the DevOps team that don't really know networking that well. There are the unicorns and the NetOps team that aren't full developers. Connecting those worlds is where Gluer is delivering value to our customers today. You touched upon some of these points that I'm going to ask, but uh, if you can just once again uh, elaborate them uh, because you work closely with of course, customers, you know their pain points. Uh, what are the some of the common issues related to network management, configuration, and all those things that enterprises face today? And I also want you to touch a bit about security because that is becoming a critical piece. We talk about zero trust network and all those things. So if you can talk from that perspective, that would be great. This is certainly uh, related to, to security because the amount of drift that has happened within traditional network management and attempting to self-build and possibly only hitting a, a, a layer, a superficial layer of, of automation, the amount of drift that happens within a network is, it can be substantial. There can be thousands, uh, tens of thousands of security violations. And so number one is being able to control the, the drift and the move from the golden state that is not even uh, understood until you go down and be able to understand the state of that network and, and, and where it really uh, exists at this point in time. So that's first of all, getting, getting your, your network under control. And then the second piece is having the confidence to be able to make changes at, at scale in a safe and predictable manner. And so those are the two main issues that we're seeing when, when folks are starting the automation journey. I'm not going to ask you to share a kind of playbook uh, but if you can share you know uh, a certain starting points or kind of you know um, tips advice how they should approach not only net ops but also I embracing these uh, api driven technology or you know they have to mix and match a lot of things but what how should they approach it so that they don't make a lot of mistakes that you just talked about I would say that our customers that have been the most successful, they've, they've gone out and first understood the state of where they're at and, and, and realized how much drift has happened to be able to figure out a path and chart a path and a course back to getting back to their, their intended state, their compliant state, to be able to pass audits with, with ease, uh, things like that. Now, you don't have to automate everything and redeploy the entire network to start to get wins. So you take the most critical elements that are 
key to be able to get back into compliance and just automate those features to start. Even SNMP, uh, QoS, uh, DNS, etc. So you can go through and automate the key features that get you back into compliance and then start to make decisions where you see a lot of drift to say, okay, this is my golden state. And these, these different configurations in the network are working, but I really want to create standardization. And so it's possible to start out in a, in a more simple manner and then start to standardize the overall, the overall network. And I believe taking a measured approach and learning, it's kind of like going to the gym and lifting weights. You start out a little bit smaller and then as you build up your confidence, it's possible to lift more weight. And that's what we're seeing our customers do. Once they get going, they really pick up the speed and they're able to automate all the networking features across both traditional as well as the modern architectures that you, you spoke about. And as you're talking earlier, uh, you, you know that most of the customers, they have the legacy. And uh, there's something which is kind of called tribal knowledge or sometimes you know, a lot of they are still siloed. Uh, so when you uh, mentioned standardization, how do you also ensure that different teams are not solving problem in their own different ways? So when those people move away from the organizations, nobody knows how that problem was solved. So can you talk about that as well? Because that does become a big problem over time. That's a wonderful comment. And it certainly is is a problem in, in the industry. And th this is the concept of having a common platform to to create automation that has awareness of other teams and so that's the data model driven aspect in the declarative aspect so if one team is creating certain playbooks and certain scripts another team is creating other playbooks and scripts you can have a cross interaction there can be outages that are created as well as if a team member leaves then there is that that knowledge that also leaves that person then the new developer needs to go in and understand the scripts and the playbooks and the intent. And so if the teams are working within a common platform and they're developing on, on top of this platform that has an understanding if one, uh, one ACL change is going to affect QS or other security parameters, that it's not going to violate a parameter that, let's say, the security team has put in. The voice team will not violate the security team's parameters. And a platform that has that type of knowledge, uh, we have found is extremely important to be able to provide automation across silos. So it's a matter of breaking down silos, getting them to communicate. And it hasn't been a simple process culturally, but over time, as they start to understand and work together, then it has actually gone quite well, I can report. One more thing is that, as you were saying earlier, uh, not to change things, we talk about immutable. So once you... Uh, Changes can be made, but you know, if you kind of lock down that layer, as you're saying, you know, taking features away, uh, sometimes you know, it may not look very productive. But uh, as we also talk about immutability, so that uh, there are a lot of things that they cannot change. So, even if people do come and go, that layer is fully standardized. So, how much does that play a role? Can you talk about that, or, or it doesn't make sense in this context? Oh, sure, absolutely. So, this is where there are different roles within operating and, and moving to this fully fu fully integrated DevOps to, to NetOps environment. And there's the architectural role, which would be full development capabilities, both within the Gluer IDE to develop whatever types of, of automations they want, uh, whether it be traditional or API or cloud, and then pushing that into a, a framework. So think of like Apple's Xcode, for example, that in the Gluer IDE, it's kind of like Xcode, create your own app and push that into the App Store iPhone, which is Gluer Control, which is our orchestrator, our automation layer that, that sits in production for high scale. And so the architects have the ability to set permissioning as they push their apps, if you will, into the control and, and orchestration layer. Now it's up to network ops to give the level three uh, administrators more capabilities, you know, down, down the stack, if you will, all the way down to the point where some network ops folks, they get prescriptive workflows where they can click next, 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 put in some information, go out and find, figure out some diagnostics and then be able to remediate, remediate outages but they don't have the ability to break the, the automation layer. 
And so figuring that out and how that works in each enterprise is a bit of a bespoke uh, bespoke type of model, a bit of a tailored model. But figuring that out and the permissioning is, is key to adopting enterprise automation at scale. While we're discussing uh, NetOps and network, uh, you did touch upon it a bit in your answers, but I just want for the clarity of our viewers, can you just also talk about, you know, if you look at Gloover as a company, what kind of solutions do you offer to, to users so they can, you know, of course, solve this problem? And is there any open source angle there? First of all, we have a commercial off-the-shelf application stack that, that uh, provides automation within a pre-built, uh, pre-built structure that enterprises are able to adopt very quickly. Second of all, we, we do use very open technologies such as JavaScript, JSON, the ability to uh, bring in uh, Python in, in our, our new uh, RPA, uh, low code, no code, drag and drop, uh, abstracted framework that we're also delivering. Uh, Gluer IDE, which is called Gluer Lab, gives developers the ability to go ahead and develop in an open capability on top of our, our platform. And then the future of the applications that, that we're developing, Gluer RPA, as I mentioned, the ability to visualize in, in Gluer topology, uh, a whole variety of security capabilities within the Gluer Secure app that is, that is coming, as well as an AI ML layer and framework to be able to look at trends, to be able to provide recommendations, to be able to start to make uh, autonomic decisions according to very specific user-definable use cases to usher in more self-driving, more self-operating into the enterprise. So we're excited about the future. We're excited about the way our customers are responding and how we are executing on our roadmap. So there's a lot, a lot more to come. Right. And since you mentioned roadmap, I would also, uh, of course, you cannot make any announcement there. But if you look at, you know, just look at 2020, what kind of things we should expect from uh, from you folks? Well, I would say the intersection of, of AI and security and autonomic response and self-operating. So a very granular view and capability to deliver real world AI ops into into the enterprises and be able to intersect up to some of the larger AI uh, types of initiatives that they have. The fact that Gluer has such a granular understanding of what's happening at the network layer provides a incredible uh, context and awareness and cause and effect capability that we believe will be very important for the Global 2000 customers that, that we're focused on as we continue to grow the company and deliver solutions. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much uh, for taking time out today and talk about not only the company, but also the trends uh, and sharing your insight in the NetOps space. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.